So coming to the what happens when there is an obstruction? Okay, so whenever there is an obstruction in the this urinary tract, uh, anywhere in the obstruction is there in the urinary tract, what happens? How each and every part of the renal system reacts or responds? Okay, we will see that. So first is we always look at the report. How is the renal pelvis? Isn't it? How is the renal pelvis? Because renal pelvis is dilated. It means hydronephrosis. That is the definition. Renal pelvis is very important because it is highly compliant. It's a it, that space or that part is a very highly compliant thing and that enlarges to protect the renal parenchyma. Okay, so we need our renal parenchyma intact. We need the corticomedullary differentiation to be present. So what happens? This renal pelvis jeopardizes itself to protect the renal parenchyma. Okay, so that's why in all the reports we know the renal pelvis is dilated. Renal pelvis is so and so dilated, so and so millimeter dilated, etc. So renal pelvis, you know. Next thing coming to the calluses. So, after the renal pelvis, you look at the calluses. In calluses, again, we have central and the peripheral calluses, isn't it? So, central calluses and peripheral calluses. Once the renal pelvis dilates, next we look at the calluses. What about the calluses? If the calluses are dilated or not? And if the calluses are dilated, is it central or is it peripheral? Or you can see if it is major calluses or minor calluses dilatation. This is also important because peripheral calluses dilatation, if it presents, it goes into the next category. That is, it goes into the higher category or the high risk category. Okay, we will be talking about those in the scoring system. So, calluses will expand lesser than the renal pelvis, but if the calluses also extend, it means that the obstruction is major. Okay. So, pelvis you have seen, calluses you have seen. Next, what about the medulla and the cortex? Medulla again is a more expandable one and it will compress rapidly. Cortex is the one which, uh, which is uh, compensated or which is compromised at the last. In case the cortex thinning happens, the cortex is thinned, that is less than 1.5 mm, that is associated with atrophy of the renal parenchyma and by this we should understand that irreversible renal damage has already set in inside the child. So, this is very very important. So, whenever you look at the report, look at these four things very importantly and then we will try to identify the pathology based upon presence of ureter dilatation, how is the bladder, how is the bladder thickness, etc, etc. Okay. But these four parameters you will definitely have to see. Okay. So, what about pelvis, calluses, medulla and cortex, right? You got it. So, there are lots of grading systems starting with just anteroposterior diameter alone. So, looking at the AP diameter of the renal pelvis, we can say how is the diameter? It is 4 to 7, 7 to 10, etc, etc. We will talk about it. So, this is one grading system. But what is the disadvantage of this is you just know that the renal pelvis is so and so millimeter dilated, but I am not sure why it is dilated. I do not, I have not looked at the ureter. I have not looked at the uh, corticomedullary differentiation. I don't know about my calluses. Is it dilated or not? So, this is quite a very preliminary way of uh, grading. So, next came the SFU grading, that is Society for Fetal Urology Grading System, which is used most commonly and the latest one is the UTD system. UTD again has two different uh, scoring systems. UTD A is for antenatal, UTD P is for our postnatal grading systems. Next is the radiology grading system and the onen grading system. We will be talking about all these grading system in this presentation.